Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of plotting tutorials using Matplotlib in Python. Now in this tutorial we will be looking at error bar plots. Error bar plots or error plots. Now sometimes when you have some kind of uh, data, there is there could be some uncertainty in the measured measure value. So in those kind of cases you like to put a little bit of an error bar on top of the already existing plot, thereby you get to say the, about the uncertainty of, uncertainty of it. So for instance, this plot over here, this is actually an error bar. I'll, we'll be te I'll be telling you all how you can actually make an error bar like this. Hold on a second. Yeah. I'll be telling you all how you can make an error bar like this. Okay. So let's get started. I just have numpy and matplotlib over here. And then I define x to b, lean some values linearly spaced between a and b. And uh, y is actually the reverse of it. So when I plot this, I'll be getting a, I'll be getting a straight line straight line with the negative slope and then I'm setting this uh, y x uh, two variables x e r r and y e r r to be error values and I can keep error, I can keep these to be some constant value or a some uh, some random number for instance np dot random dot rand and then I'm going to pass n and similarly I'm going to copy this copy this and paste it over here okay thereby we have some two different data sets and now if I uh, to get the error bar plot what you do is this is actually the syntax you pass the x, vari x variable and the y variable so the x, x axis and y axis variable and then there is this a, a common co I mean uh, keyword argument called as um, <laughs> keyword argument, argument called as x e r r this, this specifies the error that you have in the x axis Okay, for each and every value, and y e r s specifies the error you have for the data in along the y axis. By default, these four will will be just um, just about fine. And if you look at uh, look at this over here, depending upon the value of er depending upon the value of error error in the horizontal axis or in the vertical axis, the uh, along with the plot, these error bars are actually error bars actually rise and grow grow vertically or horizontally, such as such such like this one. This would be helpful if you have data wherein there is uncertainty in both the x-axis and as well as in the y-axis data. Okay, and now um, you can instead you can set this term to co constant value that will also work. But uh, over here, when you run this plot over run this plot, you see the f it's uh, all of them are in a single color. That's a bit boring. That, that's a bit boring. And also, if you look at it, um, we would like to have the error bars in a separate color. Thereby, we notice some we notice it differently. And the plot in a separate color, and uh, and also we like to put a label. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to comment this line out. This line will make sure that this line will make sure that uh, this line will make sure we have we have put a label to it. So and this line over here, this line over here, we specify the format of the line format of the plot. So this is actually a normal plot with a little bit of uh, error bars drawn on top of it. So if you put fmt equals dash, we'll draw a straight line. We just draw a straight line. And over here, I'm setting the color to be green. So if we run this, and this, there you go. The overall plot is green in color, and you have a label called a strength. I mean, you have a trend, I mean, legend with a value called a strength over here. Fine. And now let's do a little bit of coloring to, uh, to these bars. For this bars, the are options are the coloring options are two, namely e color and e line width. E color specifies the error bars color, so I'm setting this to be XKCD color salmon, so it's going to be a light uh, red light. Uh, it's going to be an orangeish red color, and I'm setting that line width of the error bar to be 1.5 uh, 1.5 pixels. So there we go. There we go. Now you can clearly see that there are error bars over here. We just have these some uh, plus plus signs over here, but this doesn't look just no, just not enough. In the sense, if we if you want to get a proper error bar, we might need a little bit of a uh, uh, a cap on the top or the cap on the left and right. We might need that, and that's what we're going to put put over here. By default, there's no cap on the uh, there's no cap on the error bars by default. Uh, because that's because the cap size is actually set set to be none, and the cap thickness is also set to be none. Now, for well, the moment I add a little bit of cap thickness, the cap size, this will start working. So let me just put a cap size over here and let that be five units. And now you can clearly see, now you can clearly see there are caps on the caps on these error bars. Perfect. 
okay now this will this is giving us a better idea as to how far how how wide uh, the wearer is error actually is if you want to compare them now you can actually compare them a little better better in this all right and uh, next thing that we like to do is add a little bit of cap thickness by default the ca cap is actually thin over here if we add a little bit of cap thickness now the overall error bar looks a little bit thicker especially on the caps it looks a little bit thicker because of the thickness B based on your convenience you can actually increase them or decrease them in size that's not a problem and then there is this bars above uh, option keyword argument and I pretty sure I don't understand what it was because when I put this to be true okay hold on um, did I understand anything out of this apparently not okay if I put this to be false I was just working out with this example I, co I couldn't figure out what this box bars above and bars bars over true and bars over false to be and uh, okay you can just let me know if you know anything about it and just remove going to remove this and finally instead of having multiple uh, error bars like this instead of having multiple error bars like this you might uh, wish to have only a few of them only a few of them for that for that what you have the, you have this option called as error every and now if you do if you put error every keyword argument I set this to be two uh, only to I mean uh, only uh, half of the points will be pr half of the error points will be uh, printed and uh, one point in between them will be uh, neglected con neglected successively so if you, if you look at it clearly the, we have data for zero I mean the data for one three five seven nine are removed when I put uh, when I put that to be when I put that to be two so when I put three three uh, two points will be removed in between uh, two points will be removed and press and so on and so forth if you have a large number of data and um, see if you have a large number of data let's say and uh, if the error bars are too cramped up next to each other and you don't want that to happen and you want to reduce the number of error bars that you want to show but you want to keep the overall plot as it is this error every is where, where error every keyword argument is what you use for and that's usually have the label this is not angle this is actually just values As usual, yeah, as usual, you have a title, plot of some function that that will look, plot of some function. So you have a man. Uh, you can put the X label, Y label, title, and you want to if you want to get the label out of it, just put legends, and that will take care of it. And then you have a grid and the show option, all set and done. Now if you run this, our plot is now complete. Our plot is now complete. This is actually the how you, this is how we draw an error bar, and then take and then take care of all the errors that you might come come into picture. Now that's all I have for all in this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time in another interesting video. Till then, take care.